Antique hunting can be an exciting and rewarding experience, but it can also be overwhelming and frustrating at times. With so many vendors and items to choose from, it's easy to get lost in the sea of antiques and collectibles and come home empty-handed. However, with a little bit of knowledge and preparation, you can increase your chances of finding amazing treasures that will make your collection shine or make you a healthy profit. The first rule of antique hunting is to do your research. Before you head out to the flea market or estate sale, make a list of the items you're looking for and their estimated value. This will help you stay focused and avoid impulse buys that may not fit your collection or budget. You can use online resources such as Covell's or Antique Trader to research prices and learn about the history and characteristics of different types of antiques. That being said, you should never walk away from an obvious bargain. If you feel you understand the value of an item and it's priced very reasonably, grab the chance to buy, especially if you resell on the items you purchase. Another important aspect of antique hunting is to arrive early. The early bird gets the worm, as they say, and this is especially true in the world of antiquing. Most vendors will set up early in the morning and the best items tend to sell out quickly. By arriving early, you'll have a better chance of finding unique and rare items before the crowds arrive. When you arrive at the flea market or estate sale, take a quick walk around to get an idea of what's available. Make note of any items that catch your eye and the location of the vendor selling them. This will help you prioritize your time and make sure you don't miss out on anything important. But again, if faced with a great opportunity, price-wise, or in terms of uniqueness, then do not hesitate too long. You might think you'll keep browsing and get back to that item later, but then it might be too late, as bargains and unique items have a tendency to fly off the shelves first. Remember the saying, the time to buy an antique or unique item is when you see it. You might not see such an item again, or at least not for a long time, or at the right price. When you start browsing through the vendor's booths, take your time and don't be afraid to ask questions. Most antique dealers are happy to share their knowledge and expertise with you, and they may even be willing to negotiate on prices. However, be respectful and don't try to haggle too much, especially if the item is rare or in high demand. One tip for finding great deals on antiques is to look for items that are not in perfect condition. Antiques that have minor flaws, such as chips, cracks, or stains, can often be purchased at a discount and restored later. If you have some knowledge of antique restoration, you may be able to fix these flaws yourself and turn a bargain find into a valuable addition to your collection or as a sellable item. Another tip is to look for items that are out of season or out of style. For example, if you're looking for vintage Christmas decorations, you may be able to find them at a discount during the summer months. Similarly, if you're looking for mid-century modern furniture, you may be able to find it at a discount in a thrift store that caters to an older clientele. By thinking outside the box and being patient, you can find amazing deals on items that would otherwise be out of reach. An important factor is to purchase items with a clear provenance if possible. In the world of antiques, provenance is key. Make sure the vendor can provide paperwork, receipts, or other documents that can prove the antiquity and authenticity of the item. This can help you avoid buying a fake or counterfeit antique, and it can also increase the value of the item in the long run. This might not be so easy to obtain at a swap meet or a flea market, but in specialist antique stores and at reputable auctions, you could have more luck at obtaining paperwork or other proof of provenance. When selecting an item, examine it closely and look for any signs of damage or repair. You should also look for any maker's mark or identifying features that may help you determine its origin or approximate age. This can be especially helpful if you're looking for a very specific item or one that is rare or valuable. You should also inspect the item for any signs of wear or discoloration. While a little bit of wear and tear can add to the charm of an antique, too much wear can drastically reduce its value. If you're buying an item for display, you may want to look for something that is in better condition. This applies if the item cannot be restored easily or you do not have the knowledge or skill to restore it yourself. Remember, badly executed restorations will not improve your chance to sell an item at a good price. In fact, 
It can deduct further value than if damage was left alone as an honest and authentic part of the history of the item. An example is to upcycle or repaint the antique with honest wear and tear. Patina is usually more attractive than poorly and amateurishly executed DIY restorations. One important aspect to getting a good deal that many might not consider is to have stamina and stay until the end. This applies to markets and even auctions. The reason you should stay until the end is that many people will take a quick browse or stay for a short time and then head on home. If you stay, you will have less competitors and a greater chance of scoring a bargain. At an auction, there might be interesting items towards the end as well. But with an auction, with many lots on offer, it can drag out in time. Many people do not have the patience to sit through all the lots and might miss out on good things towards the end. In the case of markets, there's also the element of helping the vendor get rid of things and making an extra buck right before closing time. This is especially true when buying big, bulky, and heavy items like furniture or such. If it's the last day of a market that has lasted the entire weekend and maybe the vendor only sells at markets from time to time, then you'll have a greater chance to push the price down. The vendor might not want to haul bulky and heavy items back home, and maybe it will be a long time until he or she sells it at a market again. This makes it easier to say, I'll take it off your hands so you don't have to drag it back home for this amount of money. Many times, the seller will be happy to not have to return home with big items, which might have been dragged to and from several markets already. Also, they will be happy to make an extra dollar at the end of the day and end of the market. One final tip for antique hunting is to network with other collectors and dealers. Join online forums and groups dedicated to your area of interest. Attend antique shows and conventions and make connections with local dealers and auction houses. By building a network of contacts, you can stay informed about upcoming sales and auctions, learn about new finds and trends, and potentially make some valuable trades or purchases. Also, read about and research antiques and collectibles in general, and also specific niches that you are interested in. Remember, knowledge is truly power when it comes to antiques and collectibles. The more you know, the less likely you are to buy lemons and fakes and lose money. And you'll also have the ability to see true treasure when others might see junk. So there you have it, our top tips and tricks for successful antique hunting. Remember to do your research, arrive early, take your time, ask questions, and think creatively. With a little bit of luck, a lot of persistence, and an accumulation of knowledge and experience, you can find amazing treasures that will bring joy and value to your collection for years to come, or money in your pocket from reselling. By using these tips and tricks, you can increase your chances of finding unique and valuable antiques that will be worth the time and money you spend hunting them down. Good luck on your next antique hunting adventure. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more antique related content.